So let's move on to probably a topic that's um, uh, maybe of most interest to you. What is in this performance and accountability framework? So this is a, a framework that sets um, the conceptual landscape in terms of how to understand the performance um, of healthcare organizations in situ in their contexts um, across Australia. Um, both on, uh, as mentioned earlier, on the hospital side as well as the primary care side. In that conceptual, within that conceptual framework, there has already been the identification and uh, release of a commitment to um, measuring and reporting on 31 indicators in the area of healthy communities and 17 indicators, indicators in the area of hospital performance. Across um, those indicators, they do cover issues that you would want to see in there around safety and quality, um, access, efficiency, and financial performance. So I know this is a hard slide to see, but I wanted to put it up. This and the next couple of slides um, have a lot of small print, but they are from the performance and accountability framework. So if you're interested in the actual composition of them, it's now um, that framework is available on our website. But I just wanted to go through a couple of slides to, so you can understand the um, scope and coverage of the conceptual framework of which they've landed um, uh, in the planning phases for the performance authorities um, collection of uh, almost 50 indicators for healthy communities uh, and for hospitals. So this first slide, again a graphic right from the performance and accountability framework, really talks about the relationship between agencies of rep on reporting in terms of, for example, the COAG Reform Council, the Australia Commission for Safety and Quality and the National Performance Authority. The upper one is um, COAG Reform Council. Its products um, relate to comparisons of national, um, state, and territorial performance going right across the top of round performance. They produce reports on jurisdictions um, and have ind indicators that are in existing uh, intergovernmental agreements. Okay, so that's the one right across the top. And here we start to have the interplay in the next couple of boxes where the purple is the concentration of that which is in the performance and accountability framework, which would lay the foundation for the uh, reporting to come out of the ne new national uh, performance authority. The next box on the agencies on your left is the Australia Commission. It produces, now under uh, legislation as a statutory body in 2011, um, standards and guidelines and suggests some indicators. Some of those indicators have been adopted and will be used in the performance and accountability framework, right? The performance authority is also given indicators um, that are above and beyond those suggested for uh, quality and safety areas and for indicators in the area of, let's say, equity, uh, financial performance, et cetera. And they also perform part of the uh, composition of indicators selected. So again, a complex diagram, but it's in the performance and accountability um, framework so that you can start to see the relationships between the organizations, the products that would be emerging from them and why, they're diff why and how they're different and where they, in, in fact, are synergistic in terms of er uh, areas for information uh, that will be of use to you um, and what that means in terms of the composition of indicators uh, to emerge from those organizations. <clears throat> 